Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and depression survivor. Welcome to another session of One-on-One -on -one with the Depression Counselor. Today's mental health recovery tip focuses on the topic of relapse prevention. Now, why do I bring up this topic in the first place? Doesn't this term relapse prevention only apply to people with addiction or alcoholism? Yes, it does, but it also applies to people with depression for a simple fact, that depression, like addiction, is an ongoing chronic condition that is subject to repeated episodes. Here is how author Andrew Solomon puts it. Depression is recurring and cyclic. What we have are treatments, not cures. You're never really free of it. You're always living in the shadow of it, and you have to be prepared to stave it off when it recurs. So recovery from depression is not a one-time event, but it's an ongoing process. Let me repeat this. Recovery from depression is not a one-time event. It's an ongoing process. This is why I say in my book, When Going Through Hell Don't Stop, that getting out of depression has in two, happens in two stages. One, you have to get out of hell, and the second is you have to stay out. So many times people have left my depression support group and said, I'm free of depression, I'm cured, you know, sayonara, only to find out that weeks or years later they have a triggering event, they're back in a relapse, and they're back in the dark house. So how do we deal with this? Well, the key is to have some sort of plan for identifying and responding to symptoms before they get out of hand and lead to another breakdown. Now you can think of this applied to physical disorders like having a cold. You want to treat your respiratory infection early on and not let it lead to bronchitis or pneumonia. The same thing with healing from depression. You want to basically, when you see the symptoms coming on, nip them in the bud. Now fortunately, when symptoms return, they usually occur in what I, I call three stages. Stage one is what I call the early warning signs. Here are subtle changes occurring in thinking, feeling, behavior that indicate a worsening of your condition. Examples could include a disruption of sleep, feeling more tired than usual, seeing an increase in worrying, feeling apathetic, etc. While these may have come because of a triggering event, sometimes they just happen for no apparent reason. And often they're so subtle that you don't even notice what's going on. This is why I encourage people to ask a friend or a family member to monitor their moods because we can't always see ourselves with 20-20 vision and an objective observer can see what's going on more clearly than we can. This is especially true if you're bipolar or becoming manic because when people are manic, they feel so good they can't believe that anything is going bad. Now, stage two of the crisis is called, or stage two of, of relapse is called the beginning of crisis, things are breaking down. Uh, this is where your symptoms are no longer subtle, but they're starting to interfere with your daily functioning and your normal ways of, of being in the world. Now, rather than tough it out, this is where you really need to step up the, the recovery and reach out for support. For example, call your psychiatrist or your mental health uh, practitioner who prescribes and, and get some adjustments in medication. Uh, call your therapist or counselor and set up an emergency session. Take a couple of days off from work and just relax and kick back. Or you can uh, have a friend come over and stay and keep you company. You can do something nurturing for your physical body, such as going for a walk or taking a jacuzzi or getting a massage. And on my website and in my book, I have some 24-hour prayer lines where you can call a prayer ministry and have them put you on the prayer list for 30 days so they can pray about your condition and ask for healing. Now, it's in this second stage where things are beginning to break down that you really need to be proactive and need to take action. Because if you don't, then you go into stage three, which is full-blown relapse. This is where things are broken down and you may be so disabled that you have to take time off of work. Maybe someone has to move in and take care, with you, take care of you. And if nothing works there, you may have to go into the hospital. Now begin, begins the slow crawl out of the pit, out of the abyss, and back into wellness. And this can take weeks or sometimes months. So what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is simple. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It is so much easier to stay out of the depression than to get out of it. It's so much easier to stay out of hell than to get out of hell. So I encourage you to create a relapse prevention plan with your counselor, your therapist, and get something in place so that when you start to notice a worsening of mood, you can lift yourself out of it before things really get too bad. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed these tips we've been sharing. Uh, if you want to know more about the subject of relapse prevention, you can go to my website, healingfromdepression.com, or my book, Healing from Depression, 12 Weeks to a Better Mood. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And until our next time together, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery.